which just covers the abstract that I've already submitted and some other links for sort of further exploration if people want to follow them up later. Fab, I've started the recording. So thank you, Teresa, Great. for joining us to talk to us about the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange. Um, feel free to begin whenever you're ready. Great. OK, I'll just share my screen just a second. I'll get rid of some of the things that you don't want sharing. OK, and hopefully this won't crash as it did with me this morning in a Teams meeting. Right. OK, so before I start, perhaps we'll just start off with a, a collective inhale and exhale <laughs> and uh, try and catch our breath because even though we're physically not moving and in fact that's psychologically some of the problem that we have because we're we're moving perhaps from a room in teams to a different room in teams um, and apparently that that gets our brain expecting that we're going to physically move and we don't physically move um yeah we just need to uh, reconnect with the old body and get a bit more physical so nice deep breath so i'm going to talk a little bit about communication in the 21st century i think whether people like it or not they have found themselves plunged into um, communication tools in the 21st century as we've pivoted online and tried to cope with the uh, demands of covid um, but what I'm hoping to offer people today through this recording is a little bit of an insight into how virtual exchange can help whatever or wherever your role within an HEI. Um, and you might know already that actually I tweet as at Warwick Language. Um, so there are some further links that will come out during this session um, through that account. So hopefully the Teal Fest account will also um, pick those up. So what is virtual exchange? Let's, we've got to start somewhere. and We've got to start with the definition. So the first thing to say is virtual exchange is not what we're doing now. What we're doing now is just using communication tools for information exchange. And in fact, information transmission, possibly not even exchange of information, because this is very one to one, one, one way. So I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes about what virtual exchange is and how um, the European initiatives that have been going on over the last few years um, are relevant to what's happening now in terms of HEIs and in terms of COVID and the restrictions on travel. So there's a little definition up there in front of you, but that alone perhaps is not deep enough. So the link, the document that I've sent to you um, gives even more information about what virtual exchange is. Uh, essentially, if you think of learning as a cognitive process, then information trans transfer is probably fine because you just share one lot of information and broadcast it to a load of people. But most of us don't think of learning in that single domain. We think of at least three domains of learning, one of which is emotional and effective. Um, so we think not just with our head, but with our heart and with our hands physic physically. Um, and what virtual exchange looks to do is to focus in on those areas where we can engage students and practitioners in a very transformative way, a much deeper way than just the exchange of information. Um, so often that takes the uh, shape of working in pairs or small groups. And in an HEI context, it takes the uh, shape of connecting with um, other, inter other cultures and other HEI professionals in other countries in order to develop projects that can, then can be used with their students. So why do we need it? Well, this slide actually was pre-COVID. And you could see that there was a focus even before COVID came along to look at the percentage of the student population that engage with um, some form of intercultural learning. Uh, now, if anything, these statistics are even more challenged by COVID. Um, as we appreciate at Warwick, we get lots of international students. So even just by physically being on campus, quite a lot of intercultural exchange and learning goes on. Um, 
if those international students are unable to return, perhaps in October or longer, we really don't know at the moment, then we're even further challenged by how we can offer an international experience um, to our students, to UK students. Um, a proportion, for example, of my French Beginners Accelerated um, Learners course, the proportion there of students within my classroom uh, who are from outside of the UK, who are going through um, either Erasmus um, programmes or are international students in other disciplines who join us, that proportion is around 80% to 20% of UK students. Um, so it, that is severely challenged if, if they're not able to rejoin us, quite apart from the bums on seats aspect of that problem as well. So increasing student um, participation in intercultural learning is an even bigger challenge post-COVID, during COVID. So that's why what I'm going to talk about today is particularly relevant. Um, I'm going to talk about two initiatives. Um, very briefly, the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative, um, which is a consortium of different virtual exchange providers. Um, it's, uh, uh, it was actually put out to tender through the Council of Europe, um, and that tender has been extended year on year. It has met the needs of um, nearly 20,000 participants over the last uh, two years. So it's a huge initiative and it has a, a lot of uh, information that I can, I have a lot of information I can share with you around that. Um, the Evolve project is an Erasmus Plus funded project. This is a project that is due to end, well, it was due to end in, in the summer of this year. It's been extended due to COVID and it will end in sort of October of this year. Um, but that is uh, an academic uh, project, so slightly different, um, but will produce lots of uh, useful outputs. So let's start with the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative. Now, this really was conceived as a way of helping young people better connect with, uh, with each other from Europe and into the MENA regions, the Middle East and North Africa. So it was very much around giving individuals the opportunity to learn more about each other and to better understand the circumstances of their lives um, and to try to counter some of the um, issues that we obviously do have globally in terms of understanding um, and uh, perhaps misrepresentation, perhaps bias, perhaps um, uh, just experience or lack of experience of each other's cultures. Um, so as you can see, it's open to anybody under uh, 30 and uh, particularly it uh, uh, helps to connect young people across either side of the Mediterranean. Uh, there are the objectives and as you can see, they're kind of social justice objectives, intercultural dialogue, increasing tolerance, um, also increasing critical thinking and media literacy, so addressing issues as we have with uh, things like fake news, um, helping people develop and understand how the internet can be used for good. Um, again, prior to COVID, our biggest concerns were clearly terrorism and the issues um, of uh, bias that were going on and being propagated within social media streams uh, and the like uh, and helping empower young people to see how they can use uh, the internet um, for positive purposes to better understand each other. So the sorts of activities that happen under this initiative, there are various different types of virtual exchange Online facilitated dialogue, it tends to be small group discussion um, on a particular topic. Uh, you'll see uh, our consortium partners, uh, Salaya and sharing perspectives. You'll see all of those come through social media. So they tend to have a short term conversational um, input around particular topics of interest. So that includes things like hate speech, um, addressing issues of uh, racism, 
and helping young people to have those very difficult discussions um, and helping to facilitate those discussions um, with between people of very different perspectives. Uh, those are the the um, facilitation is done by trained facilitators. Um, the this area, the training to develop virtual exchange projects, we call them TEPs, so transnational uh, exchange projects. This is very much the uni collaboration side of the area. So that's, that's the organization that I'm involved in. And uh, this is academic input to help practitioners develop their skills in order to uh, develop a project that they can use to connect their students with other international students. So to give you an idea in healthcare, for example, the University of Portsmouth, uh, their practitioners trained with us and they deliver a transnational uh, exchange project with Sweden and with Leiden University in the Netherlands around healthcare. Um, on the business front, we have transnational uh, projects that have been delivered around culture in business between Krakow in Poland and Tunisia, in marketing as well between S Spain and Tunisia, and um, a quite an exciting one that was the immersive telepresence uh, TEP, uh, which is um, theatre based and that was Coventry University and Tampere University in Finland. So these TEPs are really interesting and uh, we've had lots and lots of people undertake, of students undertaking these. But what we do is train the practitioners in order to develop a really effective TEP. Uh, and a TEP generally can last anything between um, uh, four weeks, 10 weeks. They, they don't have to be any particular length though, according to the project leaders uh, needs. Uh, two more, very quickly, two more other activities, advocacy training. So again, this is about debate and fostering the skills that are necessary to listen and understand and advocate for others. That's delivered by Anna Lind Foundation. And our uh, interactive open online courses, these are large scale uh, OOCs, IOOCs they're called. Uh, again, they follow a particular topic um, with video lectures and skill building activities. So the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange offers lots of different ways of participating. So Evolve, the Erasmus Evolve project. This was a two year project. Again, it's very much, this is an academic project. It's very much based upon gathering evidence of the value of virtual exchange uh, and examining what works and what doesn't. Um, so this, as I say, will come to uh, fruition in October. There already have been lots of outputs. People have been trained through two co-laboratory training sessions already. Uh, we did have participants there from Warwick. Um, Warwick is a member of uh, Uni Collaboration, which is the um, lead body for the higher education institutions in this area. Uh, this is interdisciplinary as well. We're not just looking at uh, language learning. So although um, really virtual exchange or the literature around virtual exchange was born out of computer assisted language learning in a particular field called computer mediated communication, um, it, we have looked at how we can contribute more broadly to other disciplines and share the learning that we have about how to make effective virtual exchange work. So Evolve is capturing the data. So what do you gain by participating? Well, in terms of students, we particularly focus on developing their transversal skills. Uh, and you'll see in the document that I've shared, and in fact, in a later QR code, you can uh, jump into it, the uh, skills ecosystem that we have uh, collaboratively as a consortium put together, which is around virtual exchange. This is an area that currently in terms of skills profile doesn't particularly exist. Other, you know, it, it hasn't been in existence. It's not, it's something that has emerged through the program that is then pulled together through virtual exchange. So it's quite, it's quite common knowledge that there'll be sets of skills, uh, technical skills, if you like, for using 
computer mediated communication, but they're very rarely balanced with skills necessary to operate interculturally and communication skills. These are all vital skills for the world of today and the future, um, knowing how to effectively work in virtual teams. So there's a rich ecosystem of skills that we have shared there on what we call the Erasmus Plus Virtual Hub. Um, as I say, there's a link in the document to that. Uh, benefits for teachers. Well, a lot of the work that Uni Collaboration does is to deliver um, a free CPD. Uh, so teachers can develop their online teaching skills and learn how to co-teach and co-create, which is at the most challenging end, if you like, of computer mediated communication. Um, we can also learn how to develop our curriculum in consultation with the students. So we learn together. The approach is very much an experiential one. Um, again, it's not really about uh, information transfer as much as discussion and involvement. So, so the people who've taken part in that, and I include myself in that, have found it a really uh, useful way of developing their understanding of how technologies can be used effectively uh, for teaching and learning. Participation in the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange is recognised through a system of open badges. So as you can see, we have um, EU endorsed open badges. This is just a little example here. You can see there are badges for um, participation that, that go to students, but there's a whole ecosystem of badges that go right through into training facilitators and trainers and ambassadors for the project as well. Um, these can be shared, they're created and hosted on our Open Badge factory platform and they can be shared through Open Badge Passport or any other badge uh, system. That little QR code takes you into the relevant page on the um, uh, Erasmus Plus Virtual Hub that explains the ecosystem as well. So um, please feel free to explore that. Um, our outputs, so what, what are the takeaways, what are the gifts I can offer you for taking a look? Well, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, as I mentioned, um, so far there's nearly 20,000 people engaged and that's actually a date from 2019, uh, it's still ongoing. Um, and we've had very positive feedback. So in terms of uh, increasing awareness and young, uh, of young people, of the benefits of interacting positively online, um, we'd, we're doing a good job there. In terms of the Evolve outputs, the uh, research publications are available on the website. There are lots of nice little video resources to help if you were an international of officer, for example, to help you explain this, um, this project and to show more about what virtual exchange can do for your um, HEI. And there are whole open educational resources in terms of a Moodle course that can be downloaded and made available. Uh, they're all available under open license. So whatever, at whatever level you're coming to virtual exchange, whether it's as a practitioner or as a team leader, as a program manager, as an international officer, or um, as a policymaker, you will find the information uh, that you need by engaging with the, thing, the links that I've shared with you today. Um, and uh, just to give you a sort of follow up um, set of information here, the Evolve information there, you can see there is an Evolve account. There's also a Uni Collaborate account. Um, Warwick has an institutional member membership of Uni Collaborate. So if you do take a look at the at the Uni Collaborate website, um, you are not required to pay anything or to uh, contribute any further. Um, and you can see here some of the groups that are involved in the Evolve partnership. I've mentioned the uh, EVE partnership, uh, the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, we call it EVE. Um, but also you can see that the S group, uh, I think Warwick is a member of S group, uh, the Coimbra group of universities, um, are supporting the work of virtual exchange. I'll just leave that on the slide for a moment, up on the screen for a moment before I stop sharing and uh, see if anybody has any questions.
I um I was wondering, do you have any um anything where we could see like the interface or sort of the different activities, how that is delivered to the students to get an idea what the what the student perspective is when taking the program? Right. Yeah. So we have um, obviously from the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange perspective, a, a, um, an impact document is published at the end of every year. Um, so you'll be able to, to get that. And that includes. There we go. So there are links in the chat there to the documents, which I can put again if you've arrived since I started sharing those. Um, but the impact document uh, that can be downloaded from the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange um, is uh, it includes statements from participants. It really depends in terms of answering your question. It depends where those students are connecting and what they're doing. So, for example, if they are taking part in perhaps an Erasmus Plus virtual exchange, IUC, uh, and they complete that and it's badged, you'll see some of those things shared. If you just have a look in social media, for example, on Instagram or on Twitter with the hashtag virtual exchange, you'll see some of the outputs that the students have made um, and the students themselves also reflect on the activity uh, in the impact documents. Uh, there are stories upon the virtual exchange hub. Uh, I'll pop the link in there. Um, just grab that for you. And um, those come from individuals who have taken part. So if I just find the link from the hub here about the stories. Um, in terms of the, uh, the platforms, again, that would depend on the nature of the activity that they've taken part in. In some cases, uh, practitioners develop their own transnational exchanges, which they then may deliver through either our Moodle platform or their own virtual learning environment platforms. Um, that's part of the uh, training in the advanced training for TEP. Uh, of how to do that and how to collaboratively work together to establish the most effective platforms. Um, and we look at which tools you could use for different activities. So all of that is included in the practitioner training um, and the platform that is used will depend on what best suits uh, the nature of the virtual exchange that you're taking part in. Does that help? It's actually, it, it's such a complex and deep um, uh, and broad activity that it's hard for me to give you any one answer there yeah I understand that yeah it's it's really interesting because I I feel for like the regular Erasmus program that component of like facilitation it would actually also be beneficial because it feels a lot of students they they go abroad and they have to figure it all out themselves and there's a lot of problems with people staying together with their other people of same nationality or same language groups. You're and absolutely right. A lot of confirmation right. of prejudices or ideas that people already hold. And I think something like that would, would actually also benefit the, the regular Erasmus students. Um, some some kind of the, guidance like that. The, I, really interesting. It's really interesting to have that conversation with you, Hannah, because um, one of the things that the European Council, uh, um, Council has said is that they see Erasmus going forward as being a blended program. In other words, to, that will have a virtual exchange component followed by or including some physical mobility. Um, so virtual mobility is not the same as virtual exchange. Mm. Virtu virtual mobility might be that you just get beamed into a different um, university, maybe to watch a lecture capture or something like that. That's not the same as virtual exchange. Um, but virtual exchange incorporated within a program of um, physical mobility, if, if that is something that comes back to us all over time, um, is an ideal way forward. Um, it's not a replacement for physical mobility. It's very much complementary. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, how how we look going forward, as as we all know, is uh, it's not it's not easy to predict at the yeah. moment. Um, but certainly, for example, if your Erasmus students couldn't return to Warwick in October, but perhaps could return later, you could involve them in 
virtual exchange at the beginning of the year in the time they can't physically travel so they could connect with students on campus here um, if uh, if that were supportive and really what you would do is to develop a tap to de develop a, a, a transnational um, exchange project to give them that opportunity yeah, um, yeah it sounds, sounds really interesting like that there, there is ways to um to do this online and and they have their own strengths definitely those kind of programs it seems yes i mean there are we've had 200 requests for our next run of training um opportunities for practitioners but i'll just share with you in the chat now the link um to the existing training opportunities in both um sort of basic and advanced level um, so as a practitioner, or as a program manager, or as a program lead, um, you could suggest this. One of the things we're doing at SMLC is to offer those training opportunities um, to our students who have had to return, obviously, from their Erasmus work. Um, and if I change the filter here to I'm a young person <laughs> without breaking the Internet. <laughs> There we go. Um, those are the opportunities that are available now, including sort of short, um, you know, debate exchange activities and things that students who perhaps have had their um, Erasmus exchange experience curtailed could be signing up for now and could be getting involved in online, um, interacting with different nationalities in small groups on particular themes. Um, so, again, there are lots of opportunities there um, for making up, perhaps, for for the disruption that we've all had to come through, um, thanks to uh, COVID. So, thank you, Hannah. If there's anything, if you know, if you need anything from me, please do get in touch and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, follow up with anything that you need. Um, Although the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange was centred largely on um, Europe and the uh, MENA regions, the Middle East, North Africa, um, virtual exchange generally doesn't make limitations. It can work around the world. So we have um, we have participants in um, in Korea. We have participants in China. Um, there, it's really use, it's really useful way of, as you say, preparing people for physical mobility and also um, making up for a lack of physical mobility if that is the problem. So thank you very much for your question, Hannah. <laughs> That's really useful. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. It's very very different from what else we've seen at Teal Fest. So that's that's really good. Great. Good. Well, I hope. I hope I think the resource you raised a really good, helpful. good point there, Teresa, as well about, you know, the situation that we're in now. We have all of these things that, that students are able to take part in when they're, they're physically present at the university. But how how do we continue those um, more human, you know, elements of, of exchanging and sharing and community when we can't? physically be together or physically travel to that country or, or you know th these things are, are going to be more and more you know prevalent as uh, as this situation goes on because we've got students you know coming and starting and and how how do we help them how, yes. how do we continue in this online world yes it's totally relevant to that i mean we've we have over 60 um heis worldwide who've signed memorandums of understanding with erasmus plus virtual exchange um and to date uh in terms of participation in um transnational exchange programs to the end of last year we had 758 students who completed those programs and and took away their badges and the open the use of open badges is a really useful way of of them discovering new opportunities to connect um, and taking more control of their learning as well and it does immerse them more um, in the world of the, that still remains available to them despite the lack of physical travel um so it, you know it's 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 very important that we do as a community as a language community we do share these sorts of um activities and uh, the learning that we've got which is what where evolve comes in uh, looking at the research publishing um 
the, uh, to policymakers the benefits and the experiences uh, that can be had and the use really of virtual exchange. And the MFL community is very sort of active um, and and very open as a community and sharing everything that they do. You know, I see so much go past on Twitter from the, the MFL community of events and sharing, um, you know, events that they, they have on. And it seems like it's a, a, a very inbuilt thing in the language community to be so yeah, open it, and sharing. It is. And the so in... Um, research and activity in computer assisted language learning dates way back to over 35 years. Um, so in terms of um, computer mediated communication, uh, what we're doing now, that's a little more recent, but it's, you know, there's a good body of literature there. And we are very, we are very open as a community. What we're trying to get rid of is the word modern and the word foreign. <laughs> <laughs> within our MFL community, because foreignness obviously doesn't uh, doesn't help our cause, which is very much about unity and uh, um, collaboration. And modern, what does modern mean these days? <laughs> I did mention language. other disciplines. <laughs> yeah, we'll stick with the language, <laughs> the language community. Yeah, that's that's the safest safest route through. Um, I mentioned other disciplines. So the scope, does it include computer science? Absolutely it does. So we have transnational uh, virtual transnational projects between uh, computer scientists. It was a lovely little example that I came across recently um, between Polish and German um, computer scientists, rocket scientists, in fact, and computer scientists. Uh, but looking at... Um, the, the unconscious bias that we all have. Um, and uh, German is challenging German students to look at Polish students in a different light and to, un, to make a real human connection with them. Um, and, and that was really exciting. That was a super project that happened between um, across disciplines. So the uni collaboration, again, I'll just share the uni collaboration link in the chat. Um, as an organization is an interdisciplinary organization um, and focusing on all things HEI and uh, the use of technologies and computer mediated communication. Um, but what we do effectively is to train the trainers if you like so we we train um, practitioners to be comfortable in their learning design in order to facilitate um, partnerships and connections um, with students in other countries for a spe for specific or even on both sides different learning outcomes and objectives so yes we do in do include uh, computer scientists in there too thank you thanks for your question thank you very much Teresa. i think that you know this this whole topic of how how we how we do things with with students and how we keep things running with our with our students in various you know forms and mediums is is so you know important full stop let alone important right now um so thank you very much for sharing this with us i've seen a lot of interesting things there that i hadn't known about the virtual exchange before Oh, good, good. Thank you. And in which case, that's uh, that's all helpful. I hope that uh, we've shared that. And um, yeah, it's it's very much about. I, I suppose the 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 journey that we go on through virtual exchange with practitioners is one of reframing their expectations. So rather than uh, business as usual, but just using computers, we look at how we can do better than that. Um, so that's that's definitely um, an activity that we can do um, to support this pivot online that we're all going through at the moment and hopefully you can breathe <laughs> thank you Teresa does anyone else have any any more questions for for Teresa or any comments please feel free to get in touch obviously it's to t dot mckinnon at Warwick on the email or at Warwick Language on Twitter. Um, uh, you'll find me online very easily because I live online. So. <laughs> Please.
please do get in touch and if you need anything let me know and I can point you to um, examples of activities that have ha happened rather than you having to wade through lots and lots of websites. Thank you Teresa that was brilliant I'm going to stop the recording um, and thank you very much and have a good weekend and stay safe. Thank you thanks very much.